starting out at Fiumicino Airport in Rome, on our way into the city to our comfortable hotel to get things started. And the first thing we do is take a little walk in our neighborhood by the hotel into the Piazza Navona. Fountain of the Four Rivers, Fontana di Fiumi. The Pantheon is the most complete original building surviving from ancient Rome. It's still intact with its roof in place. A remarkable wonder of ancient engineering built out of concrete and stone and marble and brick. Nearby, a little Baroque church, Sant'Ivo, and the Trevi Fountain built in a grand Baroque style. You have to stand here and throw two coins in the fountain, one for a wish and one to return home. We travel sometimes as the locals do, taking the city bus over to the Vatican into the grandest room of all in the world, St. Peter's Basilica. If you arrive in the afternoon, very often you will run into a mass with singing. And down below there's some crypts and tombs. St. Peter's has to be the number one attraction in Rome. You must go to St. Peter's and it's good to do it with a guide who will explain things to you. That evening we head for a memorable meal, our first of many fantastic meals on this trip. This is the first day of the tour and we're eating at Tosca. Just a simple trattoria. They have fresh pasta, pizza, various kinds of meat dishes right near San Andrea de la Valle, right near our hotel where we're having breakfast now at the Hotel Tiziano. Great spot to stay when you're in Rome. The Company Fiori is right here. It's right in front of us, so that's how close we are from the hotel. So here we are in the Campo dei Fiori, which means field of flowers. In the old days, it was a grass field and there was flowers, apparently. And this has been here since the old days. Uh, back in the time of the Renaissance, this was the center of town. And even today, it's a very popular gathering spot. It's got all the fresh fruits and vegetables. There's a fish market. There's little knickknacks for sale as well. Particularly down at the far end, you'll find some little um, t-shirts and maybe some clothing even at the far corner down there. Before the days when everybody had their own refrigerators, people would shop for fresh produce every day or so. Well, it's still a bit of a tradition, even though people have refrigerators, of course, today in Rome. They like to shop for their foods fresh for that great home cooking. And so up top, there's private apartments still. One of the things we love to do on our trips is walk in the local neighborhoods, through the little alleys, into the cafes, and into some of the most spectacular churches. It is really a spectacular interior. Chiesa Nova is built in the Counter-Reformation style. Walking the back streets past the furniture restorers, we get to the Castello Sant'Angelo and the Ponte Sant'Angelo. The big building at the end of the bridge is the Castello Sant'Angelo. Castle of the Angel. Sometimes it might seem like in World Traveler that all we do is walk and eat, and that's a fair description of what happens on our tours. A lot of walking, a lot of eating. Here we're enjoying a fabulous dinner at Costanza. Parts of the building are 2,000 years old, which puts our little birthday celebration in a nice perspective. And then after, maybe take a stroll in the little back streets of Trastevere particularly charming after a light sprinkle glistens the cobblestones. So we don't want to go into too much detail this morning, but just let's say that the city, it's believed, was founded in the 8th century BC. The year exact is 753, so it seems though that the city was even a trading post long before Romulus. They have found Greek ceramics of the 10th century BC, which are down near the River Tiber, just below the Capitoline Hill. It's incredibly useful to have a local expert describe and explain the sites of the city to you, so come along as we have a look at ancient Rome. 
how civilized they were. The use of water, the use of cleanliness, but of course they used an awful lot of that in the baths because they did believe it was important to keep clean, unlike all the other ancient peoples in general. So this is a very, very important area of the city. And now we're coming up on the portico of Octavia. So this was an area called the, the portico of Octavia. Just look at the beautiful columns. They are nearly completely well preserved with the fluted. You see fluted is when they're carved into in that long way down. You would have a library. You would have maybe a little temple. And can you see here how they're actually freestanding? Can you see those columns? It's earlier than the Colosseum. You see the way the arches are? We'll see that later on. But can you see how in the 16th century they built a palace on top, a Renaissance palace, following the curve. There are still people there today living over the ruins of a Roman building. Going back to before the time of Christ, look at the three beautiful columns there. That was once a temple to Apollo. Very beautiful temple. There were many temples in this area. We're going to take a nice smooth steps to the Capitoline Hill. Capitoline Hill then was used for a living because they could defend themselves once they settled. And on the right, we have the Tiber. Can you see there with the twins? Again, the cornucopia, as you know, that horn full of good things is a sign of plenty and abundance. The English word capital comes from this very site for the Capitoline was the first capital of ancient Rome. And from here, you get a nice view down into the Forum. What we could do, Dennis, is we could actually walk down there and walk through the Forum. And up here, we have a very good example of a temple. First of all, you can see the side, how it was built in the Tupo rock. This is the local volcanic rock in Rome. The ancient Forum was the very center of Rome for many centuries. There was markets here, there was temples, and it was just the great meeting spot. From here, then, we can see how well laid out the whole thing was. And they had a whole series of little cells where they kept the animals. And then they had these very elaborate uh, lifts to bring them up and in fact they could even change the scenery very quick because it was a wooden floor they had very advanced stage machinery that they could completely change the setting in a matter of a few minutes. What they did is because you know the Greeks always built their temples on the side of a hill to support the seating. Instead here the Romans are on flat land in fact originally here there was a lake. Uh, the stone was taken away in the Middle, a Middle Ages and in the Renaissance so all we see now are the bones of the building. This time we took a day trip out to a nearby set of ruins called Hadrian's Villa. Here you see the reconstruction of what it once looked like, an amazing collection of palaces and temples and theaters and fountains. The Emperor Hadrian, who ruled during the first century, was a great statesman, he was a military leader, under him the empire expanded, and he was also a great fan of architecture. So on the grounds of his palace, he created buildings that represented many of the styles found throughout the empire. Another fascinating complex to visit is the Tivoli Gardens. This is much later in time. It was built during the Renaissance, and later in the Baroque period, it was expanded into these lovely fountains that you see today. Open to the public, you can stroll through the gardens and admire the whimsical fountains, the beautiful plantings, the gardens are lushly landscaped. You'll find that it's well worth the hour it takes to get there. We haven't called the taxis yet, but we'll call them in about five minutes. Loading up taxis on our way. Okay, all right, Nicole. Thanks a lot. Zipping along here with our uh, Roman taxi through the streets of the city. Arriving at the Termini station only took about 10 minutes from the Titiana Hotel. Into the station. The Termini is a uh, quite busy station, you know. Well, here you see exactly how we transfer from the hotel to the train station on our tour of Europe. We go by train all the way from Rome to London. And this is how we do it. It's really quite easy.